Welcome to this special episode of Mastermind Fireside Chat with me, Rupa Patel. This show is all about educating, inspiring and empowering aspiring mastermind hosts from all over the world. And today, this episode is so special, special, special to me because on today's show, you can see creative Katrina. Welcome, Katrina. Thank you so much, Rupa. It's great to be here with you today. And Katrina is dialing in all the way from Colorado, USA. Yes. Yes. It's, we had a lot of thunderstorms here last night, too. So it's been a nice spring. We're getting some good rain, which is amazing. Fantastic. Good weather there. Uh, if you're wondering who is Katrina, let me give a quick introduction of Creative Katrina. Katrina <laughs> is founder of Creative Mastermind Online. I repeat, Creative Mastermind Online. And she is a creative and content consultant, a professional writer and a podcast star. Let us give a big drum roll and welcome Creative Katrina. Oh, thank you so much. I already feel loved and I've only been here two minutes. It's amazing. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I have been calling you, referring to you as Creative Katrina. Would you <laughs> like to do the honors and walk all the audience and the listeners through why are you called as Creative Katrina? Thank you so much for asking that because I think for a lot of folks, it can be sort of seen as a gimmicky thing. But for me, my focus is really supporting and helping other creatives to be the best that they can be in their chosen field. So that means photographers, filmmakers, writers, anyone that you can think of in the event space because they're creative in the way that they set up events. Um, so many ways that we are also creative and don't necessarily give ourselves credit for. Um, as people in general, I think we need more attention and focus on supporting creative people and making sure that they have the tools that they need and the support that they need so that they can create in a way that feels good and that they're successful. And that's why for the Creative Mastermind Online, I really support and work with other creatives and other creative entrepreneurs to help them do that. We all need support and a voice. And what a better way to do that than to come together and share what we know in the different fields that we're involved in. That is so fabulous. And the kind of service that you're doing to creators all over the globe is mm -hmm. fabulous. And as I was telling you the first time when we talked, I have never come across you know, anybody who is exclusively in the super niche of creatives only. And that is so powerful. And you are doing an amazing service to creatives all over the globe. And I'm very sure uh, among the listeners, all the creators, so if you are into creative field of any sort, mm -hmm. pay close attention, take your books, keep your pen and paper ready, and listen to Creative Katrina for the golden nuggets. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. I, and I do believe that as far as a, a surge of creativity, it has to, I mean, we're all going through a really interesting global challenge right now. We're really being asked to be creative. And my hope is that the people that have been sort of sitting in the background and not really sure if they should take that step forward to really step into their creativity in a new way and express themselves that they feel inspired to do so now more than ever. Fabulous, fabulous. Yeah. And you know, you know, even before I could um, go ahead, I just want to take this uh, opportunity and thank you from the bottom of my heart, not only for being here. I mean, that's such a big honor just to have a communication with somebody as wonderful as you. So yes, I'm so grateful for that. But I'm also grateful for you, uh, you know, because you taught me an amazing word today. And that is impacts. I did mm -hmm. not know about it. 
and the meaning and the depth and what you are doing it is also powerful but could you please do the honor of um, helping me and helping my viewers understand what does this word impact mean and how are you plugging that into your masterminds or life in general? Yes, I certainly can. Um, an empath is someone that has an elevated aspect of feeling the emotions and the sensations of a situation and another person. We technically are all empathic. Some people identify as empaths and they tend to normally be creative people because they're more in touch with that heart-centered, intuitive part of who they are. And a lot of creatives, when you think about it from a technical perspective, are creating from that heart space. They feel inspired, so then they build from that and they make something that they can only see the vision for in their mind and their heart. And so quite by accident, I, I happen to be an empath, but when I first started the Creative Mastermind Online, empaths just happened to join the class. It wasn't necessarily something that I was specifically targeting for my marketing, but it was so wonderful to see because it shows that I'm rising up and showing who I am so that that matches other empaths and they can feel comfortable to step up and do the same. And that's really been a, a beautiful byproduct that I wasn't expecting. And that's so lovely. And, and I think it's very really clear, you know, you attract what you emit, the kind of energy that you emit. And that's mm -hmm. in everywhere, not only in our businesses or in our mastermind, but life in general. And it's yes. just beautiful what you're doing and how you're plugging that in. So thank you for sharing that, Katrina. Yeah, sure. And if anyone has questions about that or want to know a little bit more, uh, because I am a podcaster, I have done this as a podcast topic. So uh -huh. I do have a podcast episode where I talk a little bit more about what empaths are and how you can tell if you are one. If people want more information on that, I can certainly provide that at the end of our episode. Well, lovely. So here is one thing that we are, I'm certainly going to do. For those of you who are going to be here till the end of the show, you're not only going to get the link of it, but you will get a lot more, even a way to get in touch with Katrina, creative Katrina. So stay tuned and let's have fun, Katrina. All right. <laughs> okay, so because the topic is, uh, this is a mastermind fireside mm -hmm. chat. And the intention is to, once again, educate and inspire and empower those people who are aspiring to boast their own mastermind someday. And it's such an absolute honor for me to invite guests like you who have been doing masterminds, you know, in, in so many different regions of the world, but also in their own specific niche. So... Could you please explain your mastermind journey? What made you start masterminds? Did you learn it? Did you decide and plan and then do it? How did it all get started? I love that question because again, it was an oddly organic thing that I didn't plan, but it was the right place and the right thought at the right time. So I'm not sure if some of your listeners are familiar with a co-working space and what that is, mm -hmm. but because I generally work from home, I actually go to a co-working place, which is like an office building for freelancers or people that work from home so that I could be around other folks and I'm not home all day by myself <laughs> just working away. And I joined a co-working space that's technically focused on creatives because those are the people that I not only feel the most comfortable with, but those are the people that I want to support and help. And I was talking with the manager there and I had just been to a lot of meetings late within that time frame that I just didn't feel were serving a purpose. Like I would show up and maybe we would talk about something that was useful and perhaps I would learn something, but I felt that there was a underserved element of the market. And when I talked with her about doing something like, hey, I'd love to have a, a group here or a mastermind here, I think that would be really cool because I was familiar with what a mastermind was on a technical level. Um, she asked me, she's like, okay, well, what do you want to call it? And I just said, create a mastermind. I just kind of blurted it out because for me, that is 
the element and the area in my own career that I found was missing a lot when I was developing and I was growing. I've been a professional writer for a long time. I have a master's in journalism, but I, I think that a lot of us can relate to being more than one thing. Just because I'm a writer doesn't mean that I'm not creative in other ways. And I felt that that market is really underserved, especially when you're working in a co-working space, because that's the fun part of everybody getting together. It's that creative collaborative energy. And that actually was really great to try in that space at first. So my first one was actually in person. So I did them in person for a while. And then I expanded to online because I was like, well, I see that the model's working. I'm supporting people in a way that I feel that they're finding power, not only from each other, but they're able to ask questions. They're able to build their confidence. Those are very key things for creative people that don't always get that support and external validation for what they're creating. And so once I did that, I realized that I could reach so many more people from different walks of life that are creative. And that feels really great too. Lovely. I mean, just that thought, uh, Katrina, and by the way, thank you so much for sharing your, the initial, the baby steps, as I call it, towards <laughs> your first mastermind. And I, I don't think it was a pure coincidence that, you know, the collaborative mastermind for you started in a co-working space, which was <laughs> very for creatives. It was like perfectly aligned. Universe had, you know, perfectly aligned everything for you. And of course, you know, I, I am completely sensitive to the fact that it wouldn't have been easy. Uh, mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. Were you scared? Did, did, you know, did you get those jitters when you were, uh, going, when you were entering into the room uh, to host your first mastermind? Now, this question is <laughs> mainly for those people who have never hosted their mastermind and they have mm -hmm. a big list of, oh my God, I can't do this. Who am I? And, you know, why would people listen to so <laughs> all these things that we get into your mind but my question to you is because you were already into that space and you you were familiar with the co-working space and given your scenario did you still feel a little discomfort or even were you scared to do your first mastermind i love this question because i do feel that even when something is right for you you can still feel scared you can still feel that anxiety or that fear. And I'm gonna answer your question in two parts because two things happened. I had the idea and then I had to educate the co-working space about my idea. So I had to do a presentation. So my friend that's, that was the manager, she's like, well, why don't we do like a breakfast meeting where anybody that wants to come to the free talk and listen to you talk about the mastermind, what you think you wanna do, see if they're interested in it and if they're curious. And I have to be honest with you, there is a, a gentleman that he knew a lot about masterminds and he was and is now and continues to be a friend of mine. He's also a collaborator on a film festival that I work on. He was the very first person he listened to my spiel. I didn't know him very well. And he's like, hey, I believe in this. I'm going to write you a check right now. Oh, wow. oh right? I'm so glad I asked you that question. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay, let me let, yes. me, uh, let you finish the part two of it. Okay. <laughs> but the, the great part about that is that when people saw him step up and that he had not only an, an understanding of what a mastermind was, but how powerful that they are, and he was like, I don't even need to think about this. I'm just going to do this right now that inspired other people to consider it in a way that I don't think they would have had he not done that. And now a couple years later into our friendship, we've collaborated on other things together. So not only was he part of my mastermind and helping get it kicked off, but now we've been able to collaborate creatively together in different ways, which is super cool. But to answer the next part of that question is the day of, I did create a little bit of a sheet saying, okay, this is how, these are the things that we're going to cover because as a creative business owner, you have to run your business a little differently. There's things that creatives have to consider, especially when, if you look at in the room that day, my very first meeting, I had event planners, 
uh, my friend Johnny that had written me the check, he was a filmmaker and an, a graphic designer, and he's a writer. Um, some of the other folks in the room were professional writers. And one of those uh, women went on to coach with me separately and she finished her book. So there was people from all different walks of life and creative expression in there. And I had to be able to create a space where they all felt heard and understood, but realize that their individual and very specific experiences were helpful to everyone, even if they weren't necessarily in the same industry. So that first day I made sure that I had a sheet that said, okay, if you're running a creative business, these are the things that we're going to cover. And so I did create agendas each time, not necessarily that I sent them out ahead of time, mm -hmm. but I did create something so that every week people knew sort of the cadence of how we were going to run things. The meetings were an hour. I limited the group to seven people because I figured, okay, in person, that's still a lot of people. So I was meticulous with those kinds of details. For an online experience, I do no more than four because I do think that the interaction online is different. Mm -hmm. And I do feel that having a smaller group online is more important than it is for a larger group wow. in person. So that's been my experience. And I find that four seems to be the magic number for online versus in person. Four facts. Fantastic. Yes. <laughs> The way you have answered this is so meticulous. If somebody is sitting here, I'm sitting with my pen and paper. Of course, this will be available on demand and people can rewind and listen to your experience. And by the way, you are, now I'm talking to my audience, I said, if you have never hosted your first mastermind, rewind and just listen to what Katrina had to say. And it is so inspiring. And there are two pieces to that information which I found extremely inspiring. The first one is you had crystal clear agenda of mm -hmm. even for your first mastermind, you were meticulously prepared and that itself boosts the confidence like nobody's business. So yes, yes it, you know, we may still be anxious or uh, even a little bit scared, but as long as we are prepared, uh, it just kind of tackles the most part of anxiety, if not all. So that was the first part, which was very inspiring. And second part was, oh my God, you are like the, the first, the, the maiden mastermind queen. Did I just make her a maiden mastermind queen? You can take it and use it, Katrina. But the first mastermind, you found somebody to, you know, cutting the check for you right on the spot. So that means you uh, probably uh, spent a lot of time in your pitch that you had to do for your co-work space. And that's very clearly evident, although you didn't talk about it, but it's clearly evident. So... Um, I really want to take this moment and um, give you a round of applause for taking that first step. Really? Imagine this. If you were too caught up in your fear and your anxiety and the what ifs, you probably would have never talked about mastermind. Yeah. And you probably wouldn't have helped so many creators all around the world that you have today. Yeah. So, wow, thank you for taking that first step. <laughs> well, well, thank you too. And there is one thing I want to add because I think you're, you're making a really great point. Like I was saying before, I do have a little bit of anxiety sometimes around public speaking, but I do know that when I'm speaking from the heart, like I had a few talking points and hey, food always helps. So we had like a whole breakfast meeting with food. Everybody always comes when there's food, right? But having, <laughs> having a few things that you know are core concepts and you're just speaking from your heart makes it that much easier to not necessarily convince people. You're just literally sharing what's so valuable to you. And people want to work with other folks that find value in the same things. Beautiful. Yes, I actually made a note of these two important words that you started, you know, sharing your experience with. 
for your first mastermind and you talked about serving you know, purpose and mm -hmm. that was literally your underlying intention behind mm -hmm. starting this first mastermind and this is so powerful because you know i always tell whenever i talk about masterminds to the aspiring mastermind hosts i always tell them that do not think of a mastermind just because it's a trending topic right right <laughs> so unless and until it really comes from your heart do not yes. do it i mean there are so many other things that you can do to make money but mm -hmm. masterminds i would say because it serves such a huge purpose it's all about collaborating and that brings me to the next question and i was about <laughs> to answer it for myself I'm zipping it up and i'm asking this question <laughs> for you so it's all about you <laughs> what is a true mastermind and part two what is it not ah that is a really great question because i do think sometimes those lines are blurred depending on what people really understand as a definition of a mastermind so to me it's a collection of a small group of like-minded and like-hearted folks that are showing up to meet consistently and also share what they know and support the people in that group. So they feel that they can come, they feel accountable, they feel safe, they feel like they can be themselves and ask what they need. And they can also provide insight and support in a positive. And I don't wanna say, I mean, sometimes I think sometimes people take criticism. I don't wanna say that you should never say, hey, this is something that I think you need to look at differently but just are able to deliver perspectives in a way that are from a supportive place. And as a facilitator, it's my job to make sure that if someone says something that seems a little undefined or unclear, then I can clarify that and say, okay, I think this is what you meant. Is that true? I do think the facilitator has that responsibility in order to make sure that the people in the group feel like they're gaining equal amounts of time that they're feeling supported and that at the end of the day, they walk away feeling enriched or like they have something to work on. And I always give everybody homework. <laughs> so I feel like a mastermind to me personally is that if you are just showing up and having the conversation, that's only one part. I like to make sure that you're getting those action items as well that are very personal to you so that you become the master in your own trade and that you're able to do that in a space where you feel comfortable and confident at home or wherever that workspace might be for you. And that's what a mastermind really helps you to do is that you become more masterful at conversation at understanding at whatever it is that you need, but you're also building that belief in yourself and you're honing your skills in a way where you feel safe because the other people in that group are all in the same space. Yes. Oh my God. That's such a lovely definition. Thank you for that, Katrina. <laughs> uh, and to answer the other part of your question, what is it not? Yep. It's not a place where you come and talk about yourself, market yourself. Mm -hmm. You can network because I do think that I have seen, I shouldn't say I think, I know that I've seen other people that have been in my creative mastermind groups go on to collaborate together but it's definitely not a place where you get to show off all the things that you know and how smart you are <laughs> or to find leads for work. That's not what it's about. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I mean, thank you so much for highlighting that point because, you know, over the time I had completely uh, forgotten to highlight this. Um, and thank you so much for sharing. And this is, again, a mastermind in itself, right? So yes. You know, this part that mastermind is not a space for exclusively for promotion, self-promotions and networking. There is a place and time for that. And this yes. really brings me to the fact that, you know, I have personally gone to, um, you know, uh, conferences and trainings and even networking meetings where the content literally contributes to 20 or 30 percent. Max 40 and rest everything is about self-promotions or networking of some sort 
And I said, okay, in a networking event, it still kind of makes sense because, you know, the theme is networking. But in masterminds, you know, exclusively calling this out is so important because a mastermind, you know, the, the concept of mastermind is still new and B, mm -hmm. a setting this as ground rules can further enhance not only the quality of mastermind for the host and for the guests, but also the overall atmosphere, you know, because mastermind being a place that is supportive that is a safe haven it is a place for people to boost their self-confidence and self-belief and also you know get that clarity in the areas that they wouldn't have otherwise thought about so it just aids that that environment a lot more further so thank you so much for highlighting it and 100 percent. yeah agree and what do you think about, uh, have you ever been, by the way, it has happened to me, uh, have you ever been to um, a specific mastermind only to find out that, oh my God, it was a group coaching or a training or uh, some kind of a conference? Has that happened to you? Not to me personally, um, but I do have some friends and colleagues that has definitely happened to them. And then your story as well, because you shared your personal story with me. And I agree, I would have been very frustrated if that was, you know, it's, I think it's always good to find out what you don't want and what you don't <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> but if I spent money on that thinking it was going to be one thing and it turned into be something else, then that would be really challenging. So I would say that for folks that are interested in either starting a mastermind or taking one, if you have never done one, you may as well try one, but also ask the facilitator questions like, what can I expect? I'm totally open to people reaching out and asking me questions before they ever join, if that's what makes them feel more comfortable. Yeah. And in fact, I would say that's, that's a great thing because that literally serves as a testing tool. Is this mastermind for you? Is this a good fit for you and vice versa? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because as I had mentioned earlier, um, just because I write professionally doesn't mean that everyone is going to resonate with how I phrase something or how I write something. So I would much rather, given that it's a personal energy thing that we're sharing in a mastermind that if they want a more personalized note for me rather than just something that they've read on my website i would absolutely want them to contact me directly i think that's really important in creating that sense of connection that's really important especially for creative people beautiful thank you and talking about your creative mastermind online from your perspective of what contributes to a great mastermind? Uh, well, for me, because I am supporting um, a lot of creative folks, you, we have to look at the ways that society sort of organizes creative people. They sometimes are seen as dreamy, unfocused, ungrounded, not having clarity, but really all of those traits are part of how they problem solve and create and figure out what they wanna make in the world. And so for my mastermind specifically, I wanted to work with those kinds of people because I didn't have that kind of a person for me when I was st starting my professional career and did a lot of stuff that I was like, you know what, I learned, but I didn't really enjoy that or I didn't really like that. And I didn't really honor the fact that I could be a multi-creative person in a business world. And so what I think a mastermind can do is help you entertain ideas and possibilities, help you share information, and then really help you with specific grounded tools that say, hey, I've seen that this works. Or someone else in the group says, hey, I tried this, this, and this when I had that same challenge. And so either whether it's me or it's someone else in the group, we have an opportunity to support someone and say, you know, I've been there. It stinks, but here's a way I can help you maybe edge out of that way of thinking or that mindset because it's the, the tools are to me, the functional things that you do to run a business as much as it is your mindset. 
And the mindset stuff can be really tricky, especially when you work alone a lot as a creative person. And I have to be honest with you, one of the highest compliments that I've ever gotten from someone, I was actually doing, um, it wasn't in the mastermind itself, but I was doing a talk for creative people. They were illustrators, like people that do illustration for books, for kids' books and stuff like that. The feedback I got was that she understands how creative people think and she's able to give practical tools to help them sort of out what they need so that they can feel confident and successful. And that just made my heart so happy because it's true. It's, the, the vocation doesn't matter as much. I can certainly do this for business people too. It's just my passion is to do a creative mastermind for creative people. Um, and in that way, we're all able to sort of see the direction that creativity can take us. And I don't really think that there's a lot of folks that are focusing on that right now. A lot of it's very business oriented kind of masterminds and those have their place as well. I just want to make it clear that because I have a background in business as well, I'm working with creative people, but I have business tools and business focused type things I can support them with as well if they need that. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And it clearly ties back to the original purpose of serving the intention to serve people in this yeah. space. And that has clearly uh, matured probably in a very different way that people can resonate. And probably that is why we talked about why mastermind is a place where people feel safe, people feel accepted mm -hmm. because they are literally with their own kind. Mm -hmm. and they're all in that same journey, you know, what you talked about, the like-minded people, the small group who resonate with each other, they are yeah. there toward each other. And that is so beautiful. Thank you so mm -hmm. much for, once again, as I said, you know, this is, this is a huge service that you're doing for, in your case, specifically for creators. I do masterminds for um, business owners, especially the early stage business owners, and most of them mm -hmm. are solo printers. And even if they are not, let's say they have small teams, the fact is they are still working in isolation. Right. And, and we feel so lonely most of the time. Yes. You know, if, if you're an online business owner, you're probably working from your home office or sometimes in a, you know, a Starbucks or, or a co-working space. But to give a community of like-minded people to those people is, I think it's, it's so powerful because it's not like a job where you have a team of like-minded people sitting together and working the whole nine to five. Right. So, <laughs> I think this also uh, addresses the fact that, uh, you know, when you talked about boosting self-confidence and self-belief, this is where it also overlaps. So uh, do you think that mastermind can also not only uh, be hugely beneficial for business growth, because that is what is mainly just in mastermind, but do you see masterminds affecting positively in personal growth or self-development as well? Oh, 100%. Because a lot of the things that... Um, I know from experience in working within the folks in my group is a lot of that is, okay, this thing happened again. How am I going to shift my thinking about it? Am I going to think it all is going to play out in the same way? Or can I shift my attitude or just the motivation to get started? I think we'll just use writing, for example, because that's a challenge for some folks. You can keep thinking about writing and then get down on yourself when five days has, have gone by and you haven't done any of it. Where I find that in the creative mastermind, you can do it. That's what we want you to do. But if you don't, we're not going to judge you for it. And we give them an example of feeling accepted and not judged. And I think a lot of mindset comes with that. Or perhaps they've tried some tools before that they find are too complex. And they don't want to ask for help. So then they feel stupid and then they don't end up doing something with those tools, right? If you're in a group, you've got other people that have said, oh, I've used that tool before. I've had that same challenge. This might help. 
And that sort of shifts their mindset in a sense of, okay, I feel empowered now because I have a team or I have folks that I can ask that have been in a similar space and they aren't going to make me feel bad by the fact I don't know this because it is very easy in our own mindset to beat ourselves up about that kind of thing. Huge. That's just an example. Yeah. Oh yes. Yes, absolutely. One of the reasons why I love mastermind is because a, it is, it is literally a collaboration of like-minded supportive people and uh, yes, I, I love one-on-one -on -one coaching as well. I mean, I would, I love to have a coach who might go to with a specific problem. But here's the fun part, right? When we are working with coaches who have been there, done that, they are yeah. at this level 10. Okay. And mm -hmm. if I have just started this journey, I would rather want to, uh, you know, have a communication. When you talked about that tool, I would rather, you know, very quickly relate with somebody who is on level two, level three, or just a few steps ahead of me who understand my pain because they were in that pain just last week. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I just love the concept of mastermind for this reason that, you know, everybody is in similar journey, just a few steps ahead of each other. Uh, in some aspects and vice versa. So it's, it's so and how wonderful is it when you, they can come back the next week and say, I tried this and it totally worked in a way I didn't expect. Like you get to share in the joys of their journey as well. It's like they, they help and share that insight and that experience, but then it's also you get to celebrate with them. And when you're working at home by yourself, you don't have that. Yeah. I'm sure you have a partner or family members, but it's not the same thing. It's not the same. So yeah. celebrating wins is one of my, uh, you know, most favorite parts of mastermind and even group coachings in general, you know, because yep. uh, most of the time we look at wins as this one big deal. And yep. when, when somebody tells you that, did you, uh, you know, go for your walk that you decided to from last mastermind, if you did that, it's a win. And that brings me to the next question. We talked about mastermind being a great place to induce accountability, to make sure that people stay accountable uh, with each other. So how do you incorporate the element of accountability in your mastermind? And what do you recommend to others? Uh, for me, it's absolutely 100% the personalized homework. Every person in the t at the table gets a unique homework assignment. Mm -hmm. And then I make sure before they agree to it, is it, is this something that you think you can do or are you pushing a limit on this? Is this just something that you're saying pie in the sky, I'd like to do it. Or is it something that you can take maybe a smaller step towards because you know, you can actually accomplish it because at the end of the day, we want them working and mastering things that seem achievable that they can go beyond that awesome but i like to make sure that it, it's realistic and i have and continue to do this with folks that by the end of the session if they're like i'm gonna agree to do these four things i'm like how about we just do the two mm -hmm. and so i give them that space to say hey if you could do all four great but i'm just gonna put you on the hook for two because i do think that sometimes when we're pushing and we really want to get somewhere we tend to overshoot and then that kind of defeats the purpose of being in a safe space and saying okay i'm just going to grow organically and see how i can do this in a way that feels comfortable and i won't be judged if i don't do it mm -hmm. so i've had to kind of fact check i guess a few folks and just make sure like hey i'm gonna hold you accountable just for these couple things if you can do the other parts great uh, i do think that's important and i also think that it's important for the facilitator to just know when someone shows up each week where everybody is at so i take notes very specific notes and then I know if someone didn't accomplish the homework or something came up or there was an emotion or a fear or a challenge that came up that I make note of all of that as well, because I address it in the entire time entirety of the mastermind, meaning I'm tracking their progress along with them. I just loved it. I just loved it. Oh my God. You are so meticulous in taking notes and, 
And I think you're very good at document. Oh, oh, excuse me. We are talking with creative Katrina, <laughs> the content consultant. Okay, that, that totally shows up. <laughs> so, fantastic. And how do you, um, so, so do, do your, uh, I mean, or in general, in masterminds, um, how do you recommend, what do you recommend uh, to people to take this accountability to next level? Do you recommend, like in my mastermind, I recommend people finding an accountability partner within the group. Um, that is how I do it. But I know there are so many different ways of doing things. What do you recommend to people who are just going to start their mastermind? How do you want them to hold people accountable in a much more concrete fashion? I definitely think that that's a wonderful way to start out and do that, especially if there's someone in the group that they resonate with and feel like they can communicate easily with. Um, I also actually will sometimes suggest, is there, if, if maybe no one in this group, is there someone in your family or a friend that can do that for you? Because they love you unconditionally and then there's a different energy about that than feeling like we're businessy people that have to do this together because not every, I mean, yes, the, the group all gels together, but if you have an odd number of folks or something like that just doesn't work out, that can be a little bit tricky. So if, if some folks feel like they need someone that's a little bit more close to home, they can do that as well. Um, I also like to offer different ways that they can track their own progress and be accountable to themselves. So for example, I, I know this probably sounds super dorky, but as a content creator, part of my work is creating a content strategy and tracking how, what I'm saying and how that's working. So sometimes I will suggest that people create little spreadsheets. They could just use Google spreadsheets or something really simple and then make notes of like, okay, this week I tried these things and sort of track that themselves if they like to be a little bit more internal. So you could use a person or you can create a data sheet if that is more in alignment with how you like to work. Yeah, and this kind of addresses both left and right brain people. So, yeah. wow, you nailed it, Katrina. I would have never thought it this way. <laughs> <laughs> Early today, I was speaking with a doctor and uh, she is one of my coaching clients. And while we were on this topic of accountability, I, I, I know her personally, so I also recommended for a particular task, I said, why don't you make your son as your accountability partner? <laughs> <laughs> I have a seven-year-old, and for certain tasks, I actually make him as my accountability partner. And the, the data, once it gets in, it gets hard-coded. Until mm -hmm. it's done, he's on my neck. <laughs> I love it. It's like the best quality accountability partner. So the different ways of doing things, whatever works, tools are great, self-tracking tools. I just mm -hmm. love the way you think. It's so unconventional, the way you look not only at Mastermind, but, you know, the entire processes around it. Wow. I should be charging people for listening to <laughs> this. <laughs> well, well, thank you. And it makes me happy i'm sure your son is excited to be able to support and help you too it's it's like a fun little mission for him especially given the situation right now where he's probably at home more than he would normally be too yeah and i think it's a, it's a great quality to inculcate in kids for example for my seven year old it's the mom who is you know always raising a finger and talking and now he gets to do the same thing to me because now we are talking about what's right and it's not just about talking yeah. then he gets yeah. the right thing and I have mm -hmm. to surrender to it so I think it's, it's a great thing parents out there pay attention <laughs> it's a wonderful it's a wonderful experience to help them feel empowered absolutely I think that's very important yeah so it's not about the age it's not about the experience yeah. it's all about you know doing what's right and doing it absolutely in your own power so yes, great. it's wonderful. I think that's a fantastic idea. Kudos to you. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> Take it away. Oh, sure. <laughs> One question I have is, are masterminds profitable? What do okay. you have to say about that? <laughs> well, I think what's really interesting is that it depends on your pricing model. I know that some masterminds are 
built in a certain length of time, right? So they'll do three months at a certain price. I have a unique model in that I know that creatives, because they're always working on different projects, I do mine month to month. So I charge $100 for the month for someone to join, but then they're only in it for the four weeks. If they decide to join for three months in a row, that's $300, for example. So I think the pricing part of it really depends on the length of it, how you're charging for that time. Is it an hour? Is it a half hour? Is it 45 minutes? Is there a meeting location that people need to be on or is it online? So that's not really an issue. I think that when you're looking at all of those different pieces that comes into how you're marketing the mastermind and are you telling people, okay, you join my three month mastermind at the end, you're going to get X you'll achieve X. And that all comes down to the marketing and how you put it because I work with creatives in a sense where they like flexibility. They have to have very, what's the word I'm looking for here? It's very nuanced structure. They need to create the structure that works for them. They, they aren't going to fit into a cookie cutter form that I create for them. And so in my ability to do that, that might change month to month. And so that's why I've decided to do mine that way. So to be profitable, I would say that it depends on how you're looking at it. Are you saying I need to make X number of dollars every month for this creative mastermind, otherwise it's not worth my time versus, okay, I'm showing up, this is a bonus in addition to the other services that I offer. And so if I make a certain amount of money, this will work out. I know that the model that I've created is a little bit unique and different in that way. And I'm not as educated on how some other people run the duration and the pricing, but that's just an example of how I do it. But because the work that I do is in that same field, I'm still working with those same people. So professionally, I am working with other creatives to help coach them or write content and work with them in those creative ways. So I'm still in that same vein and the mastermind just happens to be one of my offerings. Fantastic. Thank yeah. you for answering that question affirmatively. So by the way, for <laughs> listeners who have been asking this question, can masterminds be profitable? Katrina's answer to that was a big yes. In case if you missed it, there was no hesitation there. Now it is only about, you know, the, the pricing and the structure. And by the way, what I noticed in your case, Katrina, is you are so very aware of your target audience. You mm -hmm. have crystal clear clarity. <laughs> and I think that's, that's not only for mastermind that becomes helpful. It's for any products or services that we are selling yeah. or offering. But um, I think the, the better you know your audience is how you can structure your payment, structure your frequency. And Katrina, if I'm not wrong, you're one of these generous people who do weekly <laughs> or fortnightly mastermind. What is that? Weekly, right? Yeah, so for from if you want to join for the month, it basically breaks down to 25 US dollars per session. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be that price forever, but for now, I realize that creatives are in a unique space and time. We're all hitting a weird economic funk in different ways. Um, but for now, I'd like to keep it at that price point and know that in the future when I can kind of get more folks that are in a space where they've got some flexibility that I can raise that price. So yes, don't be afraid to raise your prices. And Rupa reminded me of that too in our chat. <laughs> She's great like that. <laughs> but I do think it's important. I mean, you bring up a very important point because even if you know your, your market very well, I think that you have to also understand what are the marketing costs on your end. What are you doing? Are, are you, do you have a social media manager that's, that you're paying to do all this stuff? Like I do all my own marketing. I do all my own writing. I don't have to hire someone to do that, but it's still my time. Yeah. And it's still my energy and effort that I have to put on there. So when I'm in my design program and making all of the different sized graphics for all of my social media platforms, that takes a lot of my time. Absolutely. It may be the same image that I'm using in all the spaces, but I still have to refine it and, and create it and, and build it. And that does take time. So I 
think we have to balance what we see as costs versus what we're paying someone to do. Correct. And this is, this is more to do with the early stages, right? I mean, you and I, we are aware of business leaders, some of the amazing names for whom mastermind is literally their, the most bottom of the funnel. Uh, it's the most yep. first end product. And I know of a mastermind that is 100,000 US dollar per person per annum. And that does not Ow. include the, uh, the, the lodging or the boarding or the food costs when, whenever the retreat happens. As Katrina said, do not be afraid of putting a price point. Yes, it also depends on the value. Katrina, I love what you talked about. You know, What is the value that you're going to get at the end of a um, couple of sessions of these mastermind. So once we tie the value and once people start seeing it, of course, you know, we will not be charging hundred thousand dollars right enough. For <laughs> sure, but I think we should all totally look up to it because at the end of the day, it's mm -hmm. really so such a closed group. And as it happened with Katrina, who knows, you may find your next business partner right from mm -hmm. that own mastermind of yours and it's true for others as well such a rich environment so once again can masterminds be profitable hell yes i don't know if I <laughs> <laughs> lovely, lovely. so we have literally come towards the end of this session and uh, i can talk with katrina on masterminds forever but i want to be kind to my <laughs> listeners <laughs> let me ask you katrina for those uh, subject matter experts and business owners who would want to host their first mastermind soon mm -hmm. what will be your one really rock solid piece of advice if they are really clear on how they can help people and what is inspiring them to create a mastermind write it out on paper doesn't mean you have to be a great writer just what are your bullet points what are the pros and cons like how are you using this to fulfill a creative spark within yourself and bring you joy as well as how you feel that you can support and help other people because at the end of the day someone is looking for what you're offering but it has to be coming from a place of clarity for from you and i do think that when you are able to really feel confident and comfortable in that the how the mastermind comes together and the way it's going to form for you will flow but what is your purpose? Like, why are you doing this? Is it your bottom of the funnel kind of thing? Or is it just something that you want to do because you want to facilitate other people getting together and sharing information? Like there's, I think the purpose part, which you've mentioned several times is 100% spot on, but what are the pros and cons for you? Do you have the bandwidth and the time? Do you have a space where you can do this? Do you need technology that you do not have and need to invest in? Those are all things to consider and think about because at the end of the day, just like anyone else that might be in your mastermind, you might have stress about running something like this yourself. Do you need a moderator? Like how do you want to put it all together so that you're looking at the costs and the pros and cons all together at one time before you step forward? How powerfully inspiring was that advice? I mean, I, I'm just making notes and I know I will be making further notes while I'll be editing this. And <laughs> <laughs> the advice that you have given, Katrina, it makes so much of sense. I loved what you talked about writing down your plan, clarity, and just taking action. I'm, I'm just adding that to it. I don't want to really get stuck in only planning and and miracles happen when we take action. And can we further adjust our plans and fine tune what technology we are using? That can happen on the way. But once the basics are nailed, what Katrina talked about, nail your basics and I would say take action. Because you can envision what you think the experience is going to be like and try to worry about every or anticipate every single problem. But I mean, you're, you're creating a, a mastermind because of the vibe. 
and until you take action on that, you don't know what the vibe feels like. It's, it's, it's a, it's the numeral X, right? It's, it's the unknown until you actually start trying it. So if you're a little bit worried, I would say just do a test run. The very first one that, um, that I did, honestly, I, I think offering a free option, if you're not necessarily comfortable, can help. I mean, just let people know it's not going to be free forever. It's like, I'm going to do a trial run for free just so that you can get a sense of, okay, I can work out the kinks or at least get a sense of what it feels like to show up and facilitate. Mm -hmm. I think it's very, very powerful. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Right now we have come literally to the end of this session <laughs> and it has been so inspiring for me and I'm very sure it's going to be so inspiring for all the viewers as well. Now, from the viewers' perspective, they have, I'm, I'm very sure they have loved what creative Katrina had to say on this show. But for those of us who would want to reach out to you, can they be part of your mastermind? Do you still have positions open? What's the best way forward? Well, first of all, thank you so much for being so amazing and really shedding a light on the types of things that we can do to all support each other in a global economy. I think that's so not only just inspiring, but just so wonderful that you're taking your time and energy to do this. And so I want to say I appreciate that so much. Um, in order for folks to learn a little bit more about me, they can visit creativekatrina.com. They can also check out my podcast, which is flirtingwithenlightenment.com, and they can also access that on the Creative Katrina website. I do take new monthly sessions for Creative Masterminds, so I generally start marketing for that in the last week of the month. So basically, May is already complete. I don't really like to sign people on halfway through because I like the, the people that are in it to, to sort of travel together for that time frame. So I'll be hosting one in June and I'll be starting to market that soon and they can access to sign up for that or more information on that on my website, creativekatrina.com. And Hey, follow me on Instagram. I do talk about stuff there. I'm not super active on Facebook. I know that you are, but uh, I do put some stuff on Instagram so that people can access the things that I'm doing and kind of check out some of the other stuff that I'm sharing for my own creative expression. And I think that's really important. It's like you want to resonate with, who's hosting, right? The facilitator. And so this way you get to learn a little bit more about me. And I know on my website, I do blog about creative topics and mindfulness. So they can certainly read some of the content that I write on a regular basis there too. Thank you. I just love <laughs> the way you pick your titles and, and the name of your show. So you said your podcast show is Flirting with Enlightenment? Yes. Oh. Originally, I had a podcast partner and he was a former monk. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I know, isn't that great? So we decided on the topic together because we did have that overlapping kind of thing. And he actually was someone that joined my creative mastermind when I was doing it. Remember when Google Plus was a thing? I don't oh, know yeah. if you ever used it. Yeah. yeah. yeah like he, I sort of advertised like, hey, I'm doing this connection for creatives and he happened to join and that's how I met him as well so he's gone on to do some very specific coaching related to like dating and kundalini and that kind of stuff but yeah we did the podcast together for a couple of years and it was a great learning experience and so um, not only have I in the short term had to learn how to edit my own audio and do all that sort of stuff <laughs> But it was just really great to, to work with someone that, again, I was friends with and I was able to join forces with creatively by just honestly putting the word out there to do something that I already wanted to do. So that's pretty cool. That yeah. is really so cool. Creative Katrina is all about creativity, content, a meticulous planning, podcast. Oh my God, you are so multi-talented. Any parting thoughts or message that you would want to leave the audience with today? Oh, absolutely. Especially when we're talking from a space of what your passion is. 
a mastermind doesn't have to fit a script. It does have to light you up and allow you to have an opportunity to connect with the people and support the kinds of people that you really want. And that's really the core element here. You'll figure out the details. You'll do some trial and error stuff. You'll figure all of that out. But if you're starting from a place of passion and service, like you've also spoken about, that is the most powerful starting point for anyone that wants to do a mastermind for themselves and to support other folks. Wow. Wow. You have put it so beautifully. And I'm very sure these words from you would encourage thousands of people who are looking forward for that, for that kind of support, for that kind of push. And that is the whole intention behind this show. So once yeah. again, from the bottom of my heart, Katrina, and on behalf of all the amazing listeners, I want to thank you for not only showing up, but also being so generous in sharing all the gold nuggets and the valuable information. And most importantly, with so much of love and support that you showed for all the aspiring mastermind hosts out here. Thank you so much for being you. Oh, Rupa, thank you so much. You are so shedding a light on something that really is empowering for people. And I'm so happy that our paths crossed. I'm excited that we are now in each other's orbit. We're connected on LinkedIn. And I'm excited to see what the other people that you interview after me have to say. Like, you're just at the beginning of your journey. And I am just really excited for you. So thank you again so much for including me in this. It's, it's very meaningful to me. You're welcome. And it has been an absolute honor connecting with you. Once again, thank you so much for being here. And to all my listeners, remember the intention behind this show is to inspire, educate, and empower you to start your own mastermind or be a part of one. So with that, once again, thank you for tuning in and Katrina sending you lots of love. Stay blessed. And see you on the next show. Bye-bye. Bye.